The answer is the name. Jawabu liko ndani ya jina. And the solution is Jesus. Naye suluhu ni Yesu. To all listeners, ladies and gentlemen, my friends, brothers and sisters, our theme is I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which means there are things which, can, which we can be ashamed of, or we are ashamed of, that we passed there. But currently, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's another gospel being preached, that we're not going to be ashamed of it, because it's not being preached to glorify Christ. I'm ashamed of that. But the true gospel of Jesus Christ that looks for a soul, to redeem a soul, an eternal soul, I'm not ashamed of this gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. And as I said last time, this is first to the Jew, next to the Greek. The Greeks represent the Gentiles. But when the gospel goes, it doesn't go to them the Greek way. The gospel goes to them according to God's will. It's the same gospel. It doesn't change for the Jew. It doesn't change for the Greek. And you are hearing me. The gospel that saves a Greek is the one that saves a Jew. So now, this is the meaning of the gospel. Romans chapter 1. Verse 14 says, I'm a data both to Greeks and barbarians, the wise and the unwise. As much as with, is within me, I'm ready to preach the gospel. I am ready to preach the gospel. This man was not only not ashamed, but he was ready. There are things that we do on earth, and we fail halfway through. Because anything to succeed must go through challenging times, must go through questioning, <clears throat> must go through sifting, shakings to prove durability. Any product, merchandise, to be able to be marketable, it must go market testing. And this gospel of the kingdom is the only one that endures throughout all the time. Imagine philosophies come and change. Civilizations come and change. Kings and rulers and military powers come. They are popular for a time, then they change. They become history. You don't hear of them. Yet the gospel that Paul preached was the same gospel that Peter preached is the same gospel that has sustained Christ's church. Hear this again. The Lord Jesus said, made a statement, I'm building my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. In other words, the church is the only institution that is eternal. Other institutions will end somewhere. But if you are a member of that eternal church, you are eternal. And being a member there, you must be born there. You can't just enroll or join. One man tried to join the Jesus group. His name was Nicodemus. He was a ruler. After discussing with his friends or his class, he came to Jesus by night and said, as far as we are concerned, we, not him alone, him and his class and his people, we know that you come from God. For no one can do these things unless God be with him. In other words, we have looked at you, heard you, now we have sifted you, you have come out clear, clean. Although we don't understand the detail, but you must come from somewhere supernatural. He was told, you can't join here. 
you must be born here. The only way you can be identified here is by being born here. And you know that was puzzling. Up until today, people are puzzled. Being born again. What is this being born again? In other words, you came into the world by birth. You can't get into God's world by any other means except by being born there. The kingdom of God, people who are there are not guests. People who are there are not those who came from outside and joined. People who are there are not those who are bought. They were born there. They may not be as clever as you wish them to be, but brother, they are born there. There's one thing they know. They were born there. Sometimes it puzzles other people. In salvation, there's no one who is born better than the other. We hear testimonies on how I was born again in a great crusade where miracles were happening. And we think that that man is born again better. Or that woman was born again lower. No. Being born is being born. Some of you are born in hospitals with lights. God bless you. Some of us were born somewhere else in the Shamba. But we were born. And so don't despise that small experience, the little tagging in you saying, be born again. Is this all about life? There's a question in you saying, is this what life is all about? Nothing more? Is this all? Was I born to be in trouble, to live sick, dangerous? And to die? Is that the whole purpose of being born? No. Being born is eternal. You will never be lost. And the word of lo lost here in the Bible means condemned. But you must be born again to pass out condemnation. The same apostle says, there is therefore now no condemnation upon those who are in Christ Jesus. There is therefore now no condemnation. Now, not there will be no condemnation then. Now, there is no condemnation upon them who are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because there are two laws here. One law is the law of the spirit of life. The spirit of life is only in Christ Jesus. It's a law. Unbreakable, unchallengeable. You can't amend it. You can't make it better. Neither can you lower it. It is a law. It's passed in heaven forever. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So if you want to have life abundant, you want to have life eternal and enjoy it now while you are still on earth in preparations for the world to come, you must be born again. There is therefore now no condemnation. No condemnation means you are not guilty. You don't feel guilty. You don't fear God. You don't run away from God. You are a son, a daughter, by nature. Which nature? The spiritual nature. Just like the natural nature. Here, the man of God says, there are things to be ashamed of. One thing remains that holds strong, which does not allow fear to come to me, to be ashamed of the past. I'm not ashamed of the present. I'm not ashamed of the future. Because yesterday, today, and forever, my Savior is the same. God bless you all. Let me remind you again and again, now there is therefore no condemnation. This man was an enemy of the Christians. He rejoiced and gave his vote to stone Stephen. An apostle of God was a great preacher. And when he was stoned, this same man says later in his letters, 
I was there, I gave my vote, stoning him. This is not the kind of a man that was preached to and convinced by an evangelist. He was on his way to Damascus to stop Jesus. And Jesus stopped him. This is divine order. He arrested him. He took him for a prison. What prison is this? To live for him without any possibility of being allowed to go free. He became Jesus' slave. A willing slave. Or a bond slave. Who did not want to resign. Who could not ask for promotion. Who could not ask for any favors. He didn't deserve them. Because Jesus apprehended him. Now you are hearing what Christ did. What he did then, he is willing to do to any willing soul. Now, get ready. Because after this, you need to ask him quietly, slowly, alone by yourself. Lord, come into my spirit. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Lord Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner. Come into my spirit. I receive you today alone by myself. I don't care if you are kneeling, seated, or lying down, or standing. If you can say those words, Jesus will come in. And he will make you know that from today, you belong to him. May God bless you. Don't think it's difficult. It is not. No, it is not. Being born again is not your will. It is his will. And once you begin to say so, heaven moves to you and gives you the courage to accept forgiveness from heaven. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.